Just what is a number station? The year is 1976 and you're living happily in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. You are married. Hell, you even have kids. But most importantly, you are a spy working for the Soviet Union. In between soccer practice and supper, you are awaiting new instructions from your bosses. Just how do you receive them? Well, one way to do it is with a shortwave radio. All you need is the right frequency and something called a one-time pad. In cryptography, a one-time pad is an encryption technique that can't be cracked by anyone who does not have the correct one-time pre-shared key to decipher it. Before you know it, you have your set of instructions for the week and no one is the wiser, especially your noisy neighbor who works for the FBI. So the number station is the shortwave radio station that is responsible for propagating the cipher needed to decrypt messages. Most stations use artificial human speech to vocalize numbers, while some use phase shift keying or frequency shift keying. And of course, there's also Morse code transmissions. Since the inception of number stations, they have always had different schedules. Some broadcast at set times, while others have no discernible patterns. First recorded use. The first known use of a numbers station dates back to the First World War, which broadcast numbers in Morse code. There is the interesting case of Anton Habsburg, a young Austrian man that was perhaps the first civilian to listen in on decoded messages. He identified transmissions from all over Europe, recorded the messages, and on his way home from school would give them to the local war office. Considering the fact that most governments refuse to even acknowledge the existence of numbers stations, their history is somewhat shrouded in mystery. Numbers stations use was limited until the Cold War era. Considering a numbers station broadcast from the middle of nowhere Russia could be heard anywhere in the world with the right equipment, their use became essential for any clandestine mission on both sides of the Iron Curtain. One of the most famous number stations was the British Lincolnshire Poacher Station, named after an old English folk song that it used in the beginning of its transmissions. The sample you heard in the intro was recorded from this station. It was discovered sometime in the 1970s and was traced back to the Royal Air Force Base in Cyprus. The last known transmission from there happened in June 2008. Since then, nothing but radio silence. Maybe their cover was blown? Maybe the intelligence officers that used it finally retired? Who knows? There was also a copycat number station nicknamed Cherry Ripe broadcasting from Australia. Their broadcast was almost identical to the Lincolnshire Poacher. Its last transmission was in December of 2009. Technology Number stations do not take advantage of novel technologies. In fact, they are very outdated by any standard. Shortwave radio has been around since the start of the 20th century. As time passed and more powerful transmitters and receivers were perfected, it became somewhat easy to broadcast signals that could be heard worldwide. So easy that an amateur could do it, just ask anyone who owns a ham radio. Just a little side note trivia, does anybody know what ham radio stands for? Let me know in the comments below. All things considered, in the modern day of cell phones and high-tech gadgets that can be hacked or stolen, a one-time pad and a shortwave radio seem to be a great alternative. Why fix it if it ain't broken? Active Stations Number stations are still being used to this day. Enthusiasts have uncovered numerous stations that broadcast daily. Here's some of the current active spy numbers stations. 
These are just a few examples. These are the current prefixes that are used to name number stations. There's V2, a Cuban station believed to be operated by the Cuban Intelligence Directorate. It can be heard in North America at night and transmissions are 42 minutes long. HM01 is the digital successor of V2, also operated by the CID. It broadcasts on many frequencies and did not have a set schedule until 2014. V24 is believed to originate from South Korea, but it has never been confirmed. Here is a short sample from the station. It's obviously not the best quality. Evidence suggests that V24 has been broadcasting for decades. There's also X06, nicknamed Mazelka. This number station is used by the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Its main purpose is to alert anyone listening that there will be more detailed messages on other frequencies. It usually broadcasts at random times on up to 360 different frequencies. There is also the mysterious Yosemite Sam station. First discovered in 2004, the station transmits on four frequencies, starting with the lowest kilohertz first, then the same message is repeated on the three higher frequencies. The entire pattern takes two minutes and transmission starts seven seconds after the hour. Before the coded message is sent out, the station transmits what sounds like a data burst. Instead of me trying to explain it, how about we just give it a listen? The transmission is believed to originate somewhere in the southwest USA, maybe close to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Since 2004, only a few transmissions have been heard, but there's no reason to believe the station is inactive. On a side note, if you're bored of number stations, you can always listen in on American military broadcasts. It's not illegal. You can hear things like emergency action messages, which are five digit codes repeated five times, Wait, that, that sounds a little too familiar. Or the infamous Sky King messages. It's believed that those are messages sent to America's nuclear weapons forces. A typical message reads, Sky King, Sky King, do not answer. Mike, Bravo, five, time, three, eight, authentication, uniform, golf. I say again. In reality, no one in the general public knows what any of this stuff means, but it's fun to listen in and imagine. If you want a tutorial on how to get started, let me know in the comments. Recent Cases Known as the Miami Five or Cuban Five, these five Cuban intelligence officers were arrested in 1998 and later convicted of conspiracy to commit espionage and conspiracy to commit murder and other illegal activities in the USA. In 2001, Cuba admitted that the five men were spies, but said they were merely spying on Miami's Cuban exile community, not the US government. Whatever the truth may be, it was proven in court that the spies were given directives from numbers stations. None of them remain in jail. One man was released in 2011, another in 2013, and the rest were swapped for a captured American intelligence officer. In 2009, the US charged Walter Kendall Myers with conspiracy to spy for Cuba. These are some excerpts from the grand jury indictment from the case. Referred to as clandestine shortwave radio communications, it pretty much describes everything about number stations. See, I'm not crazy, it's all real. There's evidence. I hope this video gave you a little bit of an insight into shortwave radio stations that are probably transmitting messages that are not meant for you, right now. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this topic in the comments below. Sky King, Sky King, do not answer. Monk, time, one, one, authentication, whiskey, hotel. This is Quantity Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.